Hi, a good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Gulf at Cloud webinar series, episode eight. Thank you for taking time out to be with us today. Our topic today on Gulf at Cloud, we will be touching on integrating WOGAD with EIC Gulf AD. My name is Babylin, and I'm a, I'm a sales manager in Topa Aquaria, and I will be your host for today. With me today, I have Wonpin and Pravin, and they will be your presenters for today. Let me do a quick introduction on them. Wonpin is our senior uh, technical consultant who has an extensive knowledge of our products. He also helps with the strategic planning of solutions, works closely with the team to provide industry best practices to be applied for a digital government. Pravin is our integration specialist as well as assistant solution architect. He will be covering the EIC or uh, Gov AD demo today. And as part of our panel here, we also have Darren, our lead solution architect and senior product manager who will be here to answer some of your questions. Now, for the benefit of our, uh, our new attendees here, today's topic, integrating WOGAD with EIC Gulf AD. EIC stands for Aquaria Integration Center. And EIC is not just a product. It comprises of a suite of products which provide integration solutions to our value customers like yourself. But today, we are only going to focus on the product EIC Gulf AD. Let me give you a brief introduction on how the Gulf at Cloud webinar series came about. During the recent years, technologies have been evolving from cloud computing to artificial intelligence. Many organizations, including the public sectors, are constantly seeking out to leverage on innovations to improve their businesses' operations. As a company that focuses on digital transformation, migrating their uh, Topa Aquaria has helped many government agencies transform their organization's operations from migrating their systems onto the cloud to implementing data-driven solutions using machine learning and AI techniques. Along the way, we picked up some learning points which we thought will be beneficial for the industry. Therefore, we put together this Gulf at Cloud webinar series to share ideas and hope they will be beneficial to you. You may check out the rest of our webinars on our YouTube channel. Do look out for the link um, in the chat box right now. Just give us a sec. Now, before we begin, just to share a little housekeeping. This is a live webinar, so it will be recorded and will be re uh, released to our YouTube channel. So do head over to our YouTube channel and other social media channels to subscribe. And don't forget to give us a thumbs up. If you have any questions, please type in the Q&A box at the bottom of the screen. And do keep the questions coming. Lastly, if you would like to engage us for further discussions, do drop us a note at sales at tupacareer.com. And one of us will get back to you shortly. Let's do a time check. It's 1.04. Okay. Without further ado, let me hand over the stage to Wonpin. Wonpin, please. Hi everyone, I'm Wonpin. I'm the technical consultant. I will be going through the topic of uh, integrating WOG AD with EIC Gulf AD. So sometimes when I join a webinar, I will put the screen there and wait for the session to start. Lah. And sometimes uh, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll miss the part where they start and I, uh, my train of thought got lost. So uh, if it's okay with you, can I just, uh, can you just uh, comment in the comments one so that I know that you're with me so that I can start and uh, everybody's on board. Okay, good. Uh, thank you for the participation. Okay, I see that. Uh, okay, thank you, thank you. <laughs> okay, so uh, I'll, start, uh, I'll start now. So there are two groups of people here today. The first group are the people who are going to implement a new system and it needs to integrate to WOGAD. And the second group of people are upgrading their existing system to integrate to WOGAD. Now, regardless which group you are in, by the end of session, you have a better idea on the approach you want to take for this integration. 
Okay, so uh, first thing first, why integrate to WOGAD? Now, before we continue, uh, you'll see these keywords or acronyms appearing in the next few slides. Let me explain uh, some of these acronyms. CAM is the central account management, which GovTech is implementing now as we speak. The purpose of CAM is to centrally manage the users and groups of the systems integrated to it. Later, we will share the estimated timeline for CAM's integration. As for WOGAD, it is the whole of government active directory, which stores all the user accounts and credentials centrally for authentication. When a person joins the civil service, they will have an account created for them in the WOG AD, which they will log in to their laptops using this account. And WOG integration is the prerequisite for CAM integration. In order for CAM to centrally manage the user of the system, the system will have to leverage on uh, centrally managed user accounts in WOG AD. Okay, so there are, uh, this is shared by GovTech uh, earlier this year. Uh, so uh, maybe some of you have seen it before. Uh, just to uh, keep everybody on the same page, uh, we will just go through it once again so that we know why we are here. So there are three modes of authentication for agency system. This is shared, uh, shared by GovTech. Uh, so the difference for these three modes uh, is the location where the accounts are stored. For the system operating in mode one, the accounts are stored in WOG AD. For the system operating in mode two, the accounts are stored in agency AD, and usually the agency AD will establish a one way false trust to the WOG AD. So, although mode two is also considered integrated uh, with WOG AD, we make it ready for uh, CAM integration. Um, but we heard that uh, GAFTA is phasing out one way false trust uh, somewhere in the, in the future. Lah. So um, as for system operating in mode three, there is no AD integration and both accounts and access rights are stored in the system. Okay, so mode three system are the most challenging to integrate with CAM and it is not leveraging WOG AD user accounts. You have to start looking into WOG AD integration ahead of the CAM implementation. So if you are on mode three and um, uh, and you have not integrated to WOG AD, uh, uh, later when I share the timeline, uh, you will start to see how important is it to actually start considering uh, start considering now. So it is crucial to identify which mode your system is running on now as we discuss the implementation approach for WOG AD integration. Please help us to understand your current status by taking a poll that should be appearing on your screen now. Okay, so I'll just pause here for a while uh, to collect the uh, poll so that we don't miss out anybody. If anybody that feel that they do not fit into any of the three modes, uh, drop us a comment in the chat so that we have people to attend to you. Okay, thank you for the poll. Uh, we'll continue with the session. Okay, so this is the CAM implementation timeline that I shared by GovTech. So there are two... There are two parts to it. Firstly, is the central side of the implementation, which is not so much of your concern. And then there's the agency side of the implementation we should, we should be concerned with. So as you can see, there's a series of activity already planned. And let me help you to understand by summaries, summarizing this into two key dates that you will know. So firstly, CAM integration is going to start as soon as 2022, which is not too far from now. It's like, maybe uh, five to six weeks. So which means that if you still have system on mode three, you should already started on uh, WOG AD integration this year. For those who are concerned about the timeline, especially when you have uh, not looked into it and you need immediate attention, that you, you can actually drop us a comment in the chat so we'll get someone to attend to you.
Okay, so um, let's continue. WOG AD integration options. Uh, when it comes to WOG AD integration, there are two integration options available. And these are option one, uh, WOG ADFS, and option two, Azure AD. So these are some key uh, characteristics of the two options. For options one, it only serves the internet. Uh, sorry, for option one, it only serves the intranet. It only supports SAML protocol and there's no built in 2FA. So for option two, it serves both internet and intranet. It supports both SAML and OIDC and it supports 2FA using Azure multi factor authentication. So depending on your system use case, you'll need to choose one, one of the options. So if you need a uh, two-factor two authentication, you can consider to go with uh, Azure AD. And one more thing to share with you is that I'm pleased to share that uh, our product supports both integration options. Okay, so some, some recap first. So firstly, we went through to find out the mode that your system is in now, and we have already determined which option of uh, integration you want for WOG integration. So if you need some time to decide, let us, let, us, let us know in the comments before I move on, just to make sure that everybody's on track. Okay, so I see that everybody is on track and uh, you have your uh, options and your mode uh, de uh, defined already. So let's move on. So how should I integrate to WOG AD? Uh, next, we are going to look at how to uh, integrate to WOG to integrate with, uh, to integrate, there's three approaches. First is the application specific implementation. In this approach, each application will integrate directly to WOG AD using its own custom implementation. So as you all know, this is going to take a, a, a long time and effort in the development and testing cycle as implementing a very complex protocol such as SAML will involve some trial and errors to get the format, parameters, and cryptography right. And this implementation cannot be directly reused across other applications, which could be based on a different language or platform. So for example, if you develop in Java-based platform and you want to uh, do it for the .NET system, then it will be tough to do this uh, port over. So this means that potentially you need to repeat this long implementation cycle for each of your application. Okay, the second approach is to use open source software like Spring Security instead of developing from scratch. Open source software or libraries are typically built to be general purpose, which means it is not specific to WOG, ADFS, and Azure AD. Using a generic open source software usually means that there will be a lot of tweaking and configuration involved to make it work. You may still end up with a decentralized approach as each application may end up using a different open source library that suits its need. So once you adopt an open source software, the lack of commercial supports or SLA could be a problem, especially when there's a bug or security vulnerability discovered. You may have a hard time fixing it within the application resolution SLA or stipulated security vulnerability. So let, uh, let me come to the last approach Instead of taking a decentralized approach with a potentially lengthy development or testing cycle, why not deploy a tested and proven solution that is tailored specifically for WOG AD integration? So this not only simplifies and reduces your implementation effort on the application side, but it also reduces your overall risk of meeting the timeline uh, implementation. If you deploy this solution as a central common service that can be leveraged across your agency application, all the management, configuration, patching to be done will also be centralized as a result. And this greatly simplifies the maintenance. So in case some of you uh, may have the perception, uh, perception that deploying a product will increase your overall cost in terms of subscription and infrastructure costs, let me share with you that this, is not, uh, this may not be the case as we have worked with some agencies on the cost analysis to derive the, the total cost of ownership with and without product. So this uh, total cost of ownership analysis usually uh, is done with a five years TCO. So we can see the product uh, cost in the long run. Uh, I will share more of this uh, total cost uh, ownership analysis with you later. 
But just take note that as long as you can leverage it as a common service across your application, your TCO can in fact actually be reduced quite significantly. Okay, a little bit more about product. EIC stands for uh, Aquarial Integration Center. EIC is the suite of product that focuses on providing services that are specific to common integration as required by the government system. So we have the API, uh, we have the gateway services like the payment gateway for your payment provider integration, as well as the API gateway. This help you comply with the AIS requirements for your API integration. You also have the identity service, which helps you integrate with various government identity services such as Simplus Code Pass. We have products for both SAML and OIDC as you transit from SAML to OIDC protocol in the recent NDI OIDC migration. So next is the GAF AD, which helps you to integrate WOG AD FS and Azure AD. There are also other products in the roadmap which can be uh, which will be released in the upcoming quarters. So our products are able to deploy into all government data centers, such as uh, GCC, GPC, GDC, and your agency DC, in a way that is compliant to your uh, architecture requirements. So uh, one thing to take note here is that uh, if you go with the software approach, most, most of the time when we deploy uh, integration software as required by the uh, architecture requirements, it should be integrate, uh, it should be installed in the integration tier. And then there's another requirements for uh, management console to be deployed in the management tier. So sometimes, sometimes when you get a product and you want to install your integration tier, sometimes the management console is uh, also in the integration tier because it's a bit hard to find products that can actually separate these two together. So uh, our product understands these uh, uh, architecture requirements that most government system will need to comply to. So therefore we actually uh, cater for these things. So our EIC center, uh, uh, our EIC can actually be deployed in the integration tier and the management console, we can deploy it in the management tier to comply to the architecture requirements. So let me highlight a few key characteristics about our EIC product. So, all our EIC products are multi-tenant, which means that you can deploy it as a common service to be leveraged by all other systems in your agency to maximize the returns. EIC is also cloud native and based on microservice architecture and it runs in container, which makes it highly scalable and resilient. Last and most importantly, uh, will be our commitment to government standards. This not only means that our product will continuously evolve to comply with government standards, and requirements, but as the government roll out new services that are relevant to EIC, we will also commit to invest in new products development to support these services. So in a way, uh, when you get our product in, your investment in our product are protected. So one example that I can give is that uh, there's a recent IM8 uh, password policy updates in 2019. Following that, we have since enhanced our product to be compliant with these changes. So another example is the transition from uh, SingPass, CodePass, uh, SAML to OIDC protocol. So when it was announced in October 2020, uh, we are already working on our OIDC products and holding uh, webinars to discuss the strategies for migrating to OIDC. So uh, just now we have shared our uh, channels where you can actually view all our webinars. So if you want to take a look uh, after this webinar, you can actually go in to, to see. So I believe many of you here uh, are also involved in the SAML and protocol, uh, SAML and OIDC protocol migration for Simpass Corpus. And you know that uh, whenever we do this, it's going to be uh, uh, a lot of work uh, and administrative wise. So it's good to uh, start as soon as possible, especially when uh, the CAMS integration is planned to start in 2022. And now it's already a few weeks, uh, in, a few weeks away from it already. So today, let us focus on uh, GAF AD for WOG integration and discuss some of, his, some of his benefits. So I'm going to cover uh, three key benefits of EIC GAF AD. So first, it reduces effort with tester and proven solution. So let me illustrate how this is a proven solution 
by explaining how the integration work with EIC Gov AD. Okay, so firstly, EIC Gov AD is tested and proven to work with both WOG, uh, ADFS, and Azure AD. It takes care of the underlying complex protocol, such as the SAML and OIDC. And it also handles the key and metadata exchanges during onboarding as well as uh, periodic key rotation, which is typically carried out uh, annually or uh, for security. Lab. So uh, to elaborate more on this, uh, in the past, when you, call, uh, when you integrate with SIMPASS Cloud Pass, they don't have this uh, automated key exchange. And after they do the migration, they mandated the uh, key rotation. Uh. So uh, to re reiterate uh, our commitment to the government policies and standards, when they uh, when the SAML to OIDC migration for the SIMPASS Cloud Pass, we also included this feature already in our product. So the, the impact to our application side is minimum. And we, uh, as, as far as I know, for this GAF AD, uh, there's no mandatory for the key rotation, but we are not very sure if they will mandate it for in the future. Same like the uh, uh, SIMPASS COPAS integration. So after doing all this, uh, including the SAML OIDC protocol handling and also the key management and rotation centrally, uh, what your product needs to do is just simply using the REST API call to, to integrate with our EIC Gov AD. So all the complex format and heavy listing is done by our product. Okay, so the second benefit is that it is a centralized management and patching. There are three components that will be managed centrally. Firstly is the app, uh, app onboarding and configuration. So it can be managed centrally using the EIC management console. Which is in uh, which can be deployed in the uh, management tier lah. So this is one of the issues that sometimes people face when they uh, get a product, and, and and sometimes it cannot be separated lah, and it will go into some uh, issues to get clearance to 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 make it possible to deploy in the integration tier. So uh, later, uh, so later, Pravi is going to show you more of this configuration in his demo. Okay, so next, uh, all key management and rotation is also centrally managed in one location instead of separately managing uh, all over the place uh, by the individual application. So if let's say you have uh, 20, 20 uh, applications under your agency, right? And then every time there's a key management, you need to, uh, sometimes you might have 20 vendors that is managing 20 apps, uh, but maybe some vendors uh, handles more than a, a few, few apps at the, at the same time. But then it, it, the, 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 the thing is that we still have to, you still have to engage multiple uh, vendors to actually do this key management. So all this is translated to effort in the maintenance and uh, it multiplies by the amount of application that you have. So having this key management rotation uh, that is centrally managed, you can actually manage all this at one location. So you don't need to go through multiple admins uh, tasks to, to go and settle all this key management. Okay, so next uh, and the last is the patching and updates also uh, performed centrally in the one location. This is uh, especially important because why when there is when there is a zero day vulnerability discovered, uh, everybody will scramble like, hey, can you go and patch my my software or not? Uh, this one must be get it done within uh, x amount of uh, hours or depending on the SLA that is uh, agreed upon. Uh. So do you want to go around patching like five, 10, 20 or more applications, which is going to take a very long time uh, instead of patching in a, in a single location. So likewise, you want to deal with multiple vendors or you want to do all these things in, in, in one central location for the Gulf AD integration. Okay, so the last point, the last benefit that, we are, uh, that I'm covering is the uh, lower TCO by leveraging as a common services. Uh. So as we shared just now, like some of you may have the perspective that uh, getting a product is, uh, uh, is costly. Uh. So, uh, is 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 many uh, is the is the same concern that a lot of agency have, and uh, we actually work with some of the agencies to to really work on the data to provide an illustration 
on how the cost is lowered. So um, this is the illustration that we have uh, come up with uh, after working with some of the agencies and using real data to this. So many of you might ask, uh, if I use the product, is it going to cost more? So we have really work, work on it and done the calculation based on the five years uh, TCO, uh, comparing implementation using EIC uh, versus without EIC. And what we found uh, is that uh, the more apps that you onboard, we will have more cost saving. And the most important question is, uh, so you say that there's cost saving, but where does all this cost saving come from? It's actually very simple. Remember we talked about the effort involved in the development and testing and the uh, application specific custom implementation. All this effort uh, is going to be repeated for each of the application. And this cost adds up quickly when more applications need to integrate. And not mentioning the admin process of having to go through all this. Uh. So this whole implementation effort can be significant, significantly reduced by using a centrally uh, managed uh, integration, uh, which our EIC Graph AD can provide. Okay, so after under, understanding all these benefits, uh, if you have any questions, you can leave that in the, uh, leave that in the q and that later we will go through. Okay, so let us go through a bit on some of the other features that EIC Graph AD has. So firstly, we offer product as a service, which means that uh, on top of the product, we also offer services to help you deliver a successful implementation. So for example, we offer services for pre-deployment consultation to help you in architecture and sizing, as well as provide installation and onboarding services. So uh, uh, one of the things that we go through for Simpass Corpus uh, integration right is that uh, there's there's some admin work that need to be done to go on board with uh, the uh, to, to go about with graph tech lah. So there are some forms that we need to submit, and then some information that we need to submit about the system. So sometimes uh, customer is a bit uh, worried about this because uh, they might not know how to do it lah, or it's too complex for them. And rest assured, more, uh, all our customer that goes on board with uh, uh, Simpass Corpus using our product we guide them through and handhold them because we have done it for so many agencies already. So we are well uh, aware of the process. Yeah, okay. So uh, secondly, our EIC management console, uh, like I mentioned just now, is a, is a web-based admin console that is deployed separately as a, as a component in the management zone. So uh, let's go on to the next one, which is the uh, transaction logs to ensure that all the user login transactions are tracked whether for the purpose of troubleshooting or investigation. So this is very common as well. Uh, okay. So, but on top of that, how is this uh, admin audit trail that further enhance the transaction logging, right? Is that uh, it adds another level of auditing by logging all the admin user actions uh, in the EIC management console. So uh, when you set up a new tenant doing a key rotation, uh, all these are being tracked as well. So you can actually track who made the changes and then you can trace back uh, on, on all this and find out what has been done and then do the correction, corrections to it. So there are either several other uh, features that we can talk about, but let's just proceed with the demo first. And before, I, um, uh, yeah, so let's go on to the demo. So now I will pass on to Pravin, we should go through with the demo for you. Mm -hmm. Hello everyone, this is Praveen. So today I will ask about, uh, I, will, I will walk through EAC management console and also I will highlight some of the features which are uh, uh, inside the EAC. So EAC is basically an integration center where uh, there are different products packaged and managed under one management console principle. So uh, some of them some of them are like API gateway, which uh, Jim been already explained in, your, uh, in his earlier presentation. So uh, they are like API gateway and there is a transition product from SAML to ODC with respect to Simpas and Copas and there is GovAD and there are a lot more coming in the future for you guys. So, so today what I'm gonna share is we are more focusing on the GovAD. So what you are seeing on the screen is our EAC uh, management console screen. So I will be quickly logging with my super uh, user credentials. 
So once I log in, as you can see, like uh, there is uh, a dashboard screen. So don't worry about this dashboard screen. So this consists of the main important things which are already configured within the EAC. So as you can see in the left menu, there is an API gateway, which is really uh, uh, required for uh, integrating different systems with the application. Uh, maybe it is hosted inside or outside the application, integrating with APIs. And on top of that, if you want to follow any in, uh, industry standard authentication protocols for each and every API hosted in API gateway. And not to mention, if you want to fulfill the Gautex IM8 policy or specifically IAA standard. So this is the place where you can use API gateway to come in and configure. And then there is this uh, EIC OIDC API under our identity services. So this is a transition product, like I said earlier. It was built for Simpas or Copas uh, to integrate using OIDC protocol. So one important thing I want to highlight uh, about this is uh, uh, it has fully implemented and proven auto key rotation feature, which doesn't require any downtime or any maintenance window for your annual or quarterly maintenance of keys with Simpas or Copas. Another important feature is it has its own inbuilt SSO feature, specifically uh, to fulfill uh, some of our uh, uh, key partners. So, uh, and please take note that this SSO is not depending on uh, uh, either Simpas or Copas uh, SSO of their own. So, then uh, moving on, then there is a GovID. So, this is uh, the key highlight today. So, uh, I will come back to this a bit after a minute. So then you can see here, there is a user management section, account settings and admin settings. So basically before going these three options, I want to highlight that. So uh, we are focusing, uh, as we are focusing GovID, so I want to highlight EAC was built with all back mindset. That means uh, the users who are logging into EAC for either authentication purpose or access and their access controls, you can easily manage all those things for every user uh, if you have a default super user control. So that means you can come here in the user management section and you can create a number of users and even you can assign uh, the particular access control rights for each and every user. For example, if you want a user with a restricted read-only control for each and every product he's going to use in EAC, so this is the place where a use super user can create and assign the controls to him. So then again, if a particular user logs in, he can also set his own account settings like changing the password and everything else. And also you can have your own password policy management with uh, a lot of combinations here. So anyway, so just to highlight the EAC was all built, in, EAC got all these built-in features for you guys. So then uh, the most important thing today is the GovID. So let's go inside the GovID and uh, let's see how we can configure some of the key details which are required for application to successfully integrate with EAC. Please also take note, uh, I will use some terms like ADFS and Azure AD, which which uh, which in this demo is really uh, uh, best because uh, I'm not really going to connect with WOG ADFS, a real one, or I'm not going to connect with any GCC Azure AD here. But more or less, the process, the technique, uh, the integration procedure is very close to the real one. So let's first try to configure our demo app to integrate with ADFS using your EIZ. Uh, so before going there, I will be just creating a profile which helps us in segregating different services for achieving multi-tenant concept. So uh, let's quickly create a profile here. So I will be using a TECK our own company uh, uh, profile name. And then there is uh, this alias. So don't worry, there are some key important technical details which are required by EAC to work seamlessly. So uh, a simple description about uh, the profile, like it's a government demo integration to, to connect with ADFS or Azure AD, something like that. So then there is a, a configuration URL to test uh, whether the EAC is successfully connecting in the background with uh, our EAC GovID. And then you can see there are identity services, a lot of products here, which uh, like I just explained, uh, we have all three in line and uh, the my info and EDH is, on the, is in the future, we're still working on that. So today focus is GovID, I'm just selecting that and uh, you can just give the configuration endpoint which you are gonna connect to. So once you've done that, you click save, I can see that our profile is successfully created and you can see in the list here. So then there goes the, the profile which we configured here. So as you see earlier, the profile was only meant to use for GovID. So if you, for some reason, you go to OIDs, you, you don't want to, you will not see those kind of profiles because we never configured that earlier. So just to give you a heads up. So then I selected the profile which you are gonna connect with. So then I will be using our create GovID config menu. So don't get panicked. There are a lot of options here. Like I said earlier, I think even Chenpin highlighted it's it's tailored product made to work seamlessly with WOG ADFS or Azure AD 
uh, by using any underlying protocol, whether you're using SAML protocol or you're using OADC protocol, it works seamlessly. So more of these options we choose here to build, to give you guys a customized configuration features. So let's quickly uh, configure uh, our demo app here so that it is trying to connect to our uh, ADFS system to authenticate one of its users. So I'm using SAML protocol to simplify and also I'm using WOG ADFS gateway. And there is a service ID, so I'm just using service ID, something like this format. It can be any format, but make sure it is unique to the EAC. So my requirement is that I want to connect to the WOG ADFS in a secure way, means my request which I'm trying to connect to the WOG ADFS should be signed. And, and uh, if it is signed, that means you have to start managing the keys. Although it's not a mandatory requirement in terms of God type, but it's, it's, it's considering the architecture principles on each and every application with respect to agency have its own requirement. So we do have that kind of feature to even provide your key here. So for this demo purpose, uh, for the first one, I will be trying to upload my key. So quickly, I'm uploading my default key here. So some details about the key. So once I've done this, then I go to the metadata details. So one important thing about these metadata details is, uh, there's a pre-request for connecting to WOG ADFS, like an onboarding data, right? So as part of the onboarding document, one must submit their own metadata to successfully configure WOG ADFS side as part of the onboarding process. So these details are more or less uh, in the direction of that area. So attribute consumer service endpoint is the application's login screen, whichever you want to connect to as a callback URL simply. So for demo purpose, I already have something in hand, so I just copy paste that. And if you are considering single logout, means uh, although I don't want to highlight the uh, SSO concept in this demo, but uh, please take note that WOG ADFS or Azure AD supports SSO by default out of the box. So as part of that, if you are also looking for a logout uh, integration, something like that, this is the place you need to provide your URL. So uh, just for uh, demo purpose, I'm configuring one data. So once, and there are more options to look out for, but uh, just I will keep it simple here. So then there is more about the authentic request details. So just make sure a defaults are selected for the successful integration. So then there is the application redirection URL you have to configure here. So I'm just using my application redirection URL. If you have a logout, you can also even provide your logout, screen, logout details. So once you are done all these details, you just click save here. So then you are done with the, most of the important details. So then the next thing is you have to configure the IDP details. So this, what is the meaning of IDP? Is, means here it is WOG ADFS. Your application is trying to connect to WOG ADFS. So if, as part of the onboarding document, like I said earlier, you will be handing over your uh, SAML metadata to the uh, WOG ADFS team. And in turn, as a response, they will also share you guys their own metadata, which you need to configure in our EAC. So before going to configure our IDP metadata details, you can even generate our uh, SAML metadata by just clicking here. You can even share the URL to the WOG DFS so that uh, dynamic integration may happen here so that key rotations can be automated and key exchanges can be automated provided if, provided if your application or agency supports this feature. But ESC got this out of box. So you can just download for its namesake. As you can see, uh, I have downloaded uh, my sample metadata here. So, so some data here, but I don't want to go through all these things now. Just want to highlight that the metadata is there readily available. We can use this to exchange with WOG ADFS as part of the onboarding. So quickly we go into the configuring IDP metadata details. This is an identifier, and I'm uploading my IDP metadata here, which is handy. So once we are done, we click OK. So then as you can see, uh, it's saying the status called generate secure token. So what exactly this means is, if you're subscribing to our EAC, applications who are trying to integrate with EAC requires a REST API way of communicating. Right? So these REST APIs are actually protected using a secure token. So this secure token is uh, generated as part of this uh, tenant configuration. If for each service, whatever you're configuring under GovID requires its own token generation, which as part of your access token menu, you can choose the tenant. If you have already predefined uh, tokens, you can see a list of tokens, its expiry date and the status of each token. So I will be generating a new token. You can even input your expiry days here. How long you have to, how long you have to make sure your token is active or something like that. So just for demo purpose, I'll do one day here. As you can see, uh, it was active and it's gonna expire next day, which is tomorrow at the same time. I'll quickly copy this because after I move out of the screen, you won't be seeing this token again. 
So just I'll copy here. So then if you go back to the GovEd, you can see the data is already configured successfully and the status is active. So now without wasting any more minutes, so uh, we can just go inside our uh, demo app and see how we can configure here. So let's think that this is my demo app, which is using EAC uh, to, to connect with WOG and EFS. So what you are seeing on the screen is uh, service details, which application has to use to connect with EAC. Means for example, if you're successfully configured all these details, by yourself or by using the panic press team, then you have to use these are the main important details which you need to use for your service to integrate WOG database. Just for illustration purpose, I'm just giving in here. So as you can see, I have created profile TECQ, service ID TECQ sales optron, which is similar to what you're seeing here, and the auth token which we have in the hand. So then I'm choosing the IDP here, whether you're connecting to WOG ADFS or Azure AD. So now we are focusing on WOG ADFS, click on submit. So expectation is your application will redirect your application to WOG ADFS screen. But for the demo purpose, we are connecting to our Topanic various ADFS. So I'm entering my AD credentials here. Once I click submit, as you can see here, uh, behind the scenes, a lot of things are happening. Key exchanges, signature verifications, uh, clients integrations, connectivity testings, everything is happening under the hood. But you are not seeing all these things because from application point of view, when you subscribe to EAC, you're just gonna connect using one simple REST API uh, secured with the token. So you'll get all the account details from your AD, provided if your AD have more details, you will be also seeing all these claims as part of our EAC response. So uh, uh, this, is, this is a simple integration with WOG ADFS. So I will be running through one more simple demo when you see Azure AD. So I'll be just logging out from my demo app, going back to the EAC, and let me just quickly configure another service to connect to the Azure AD. I'm not gonna run through all the configuration details, don't panic, because uh, the process I'm gonna use is the same, and I will be using SAML protocol, just that the IDP is very different. So I will be creating one more config here. Let's just choose Azure AD this time. So just keying in some important details with respect to Azure AD. So this time, let's make sure that you don't want any secure uh, request to be connected to Azure AD. I'm switching off this. Let's also make sure that Azure AD doesn't require any metadata during onboarding. Then some of the key details about the request. So I'm just using some key, default uh, stuff here. So then your uh, application uh, login redirection, so which I have already in handy here. So let's not consider any logout scenarios or anything like that. Just quickly save this detail. As you can see, uh, you can see the gateway is connecting to Azure AD now. I will be quickly configuring the IDP details. At uh, this time, let's, let's do a quick uh, different scenario. Let's say because we are not exchanging metadata with Azure AD. So that means they are also not going to return us any metadata. So we'll just quickly configure our uh, certificate instead of metadata, which I already have in hand. This certificate is from Azure AD. When you are successfully integrating with them, so you have to use this certificate for verification of claims and all these details. Also, you need to provide a login URL. So I'm just giving your login URL here. Click, uh, save the details. So we're almost there. I'm just quickly generating a sales, uh, the, the uh, secure access token. Just choose the default time and then I'm quickly copying here. So as you can see, when you go back to GovID, so you have two services successfully trying to integrate with two different uh, IDPs, which is in this case, one is Azure AD, one is WOG ADFS. Let's try to see how the Azure AD looks like when we try to log in with that. So again, I'm going back to the uh, same demo app, just quickly filling it my profile. And this time the service ID is the different, you see E8369, E8369, this is the one I'm trying to connect. So the end uh, gateway is the Azure AD, providing the secure token. And this time I choose Azure AD as IDP. So when you click submit, you will expect a login screen from Azure AD. So as you can see, this is my uh, Topanic various Azure AD uh, login screen. So I'm just quickly entering my AD credentials. So I'm clicking next, password. So then you can see here, it is also asking for 2FA. So I'm just using my mobile to uh, quickly uh, use my mobile to, as you can see here, so it's asking for the Microsoft Authenticator. I'm just clicking approve. Once you just approve, then you can see here, the status should be successful and it is, uh, it's allowing to whether you want to stay in or not, just you can say no. 
So then in the background, everything works with our EAC Gaudi to get all the claims, verifying the signature and everything else. So this is this is at high level how how our uh, demo can uh, demo. I want to show you guys a simple demo how it, our EAC Gaudi in the background works to connect with either Azure AD or ADFS in any case under uh, by using any protocol. You should have noticed one thing here. Whatever the changes I have done here, whatever the configuration I've been doing in EIC, we're not doing any restarts in the background. We are not doing any manual startups or shutdowns or nothing. So that's the beauty of EIC that we it's, it seamlessly works in the background. Everything, uh, everything we are trying to achieve like a zero downtime here for every configuration you change. So quickly to go on. So I just want to highlight some important transaction logs. Uh, this is one of the future from our EAC where every transaction you made through EAC Gaudi will be considered in our transaction logs. As you can see, just recently or today, if you consider at particular timestamp like 146, just now Singapore time, you can see we have did the two transactions, and uh, you can even get more details when you expand. And last but not least, I want to show you guys a pictorial representation of our transaction logs. So this is something like. Uh, uh, gives you a better pictorial view of what are the transactions so far achieved. Just to give you guys a, a brief important uh, uh, error breakdown feature of this scenario. So you can see for a particular time range, you can see all these uh, important breakdowns happen in this particular time range and also how many requests has been failed, something like that. So I'm not considering more, uh, I'm not trying to share you guys more details, but please be aware that this is not simple integration. Without ESA, I would say that it's is a very hard and complex integration technique. Don't forget SSO, don't forget SSO logout scenarios, don't forget if you have a requirement uh, uh, not to use SSO at all. There was some application which we met, they don't want SSO at all. So how do you make sure your integration is fine? And also don't forget your IWA integrated Windows authentication. All these works out of box from, from our EAC. So hope uh, you understand at high level. Thank you guys and go to you. Thanks. Thank you, Praveen. Okay, uh, that's a very interesting demo to show us how easy it is, it is to onboard a new application tenant profile to EIC, AD, and how the key management and configuration is greatly simplified. So when I see the demo, uh, it reminds me of uh, when you're doing the Google tutorial online. Uh. So basically you just uh, copy, copy, then paste, 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 then next, next, then after that, uh, everything is set up and you can, you can run for production. Again, uh. So that's, that, that is what it reminds me of. So um, before we head to the uh, Q&A session, let me wrap up today's uh, webinar by summary, summarizing some key benefits of EIC Gov AD. Okay, so first, using a product tailored for WOG AD integration that supports both WOG ADFS and uh, Azure AD will ensure a successful implementation and greatly reduce the risk of the integration as compared to an application-specific approach or using some uh, general purpose <coughs> open source software. Okay. Uh, secondly, EIC Gaf AD helps to simplify the onboarding integration to WOG AD with a solution that has been already tested and proven to work connected to production already. So this keep things simple for the application as uh, all the integration and testing effort with uh, WOG AD has already been incorporated into the product. And this will also help you meet the timeline announced by Gaf, uh, Gaf Tech and be ready for CAM integration, which is not too far from now. Okay. So last but not least, uh, the deployment of uh, EIC Gaf AD as a common service to leverage across all applications in your agency will reduce your overall TCO and provide a common solution that can be centrally managed and patched. So if you have any questions specific to uh, uh, this uh, TCO and how it applies to your agency, and whether you really see this cost saving, right? Uh, please let us know. We'll get someone to attend to you. And this comes to the end of our presentation today. Uh, let's let's proceed to the Q and A session. Okay, so uh, uh, our panel of uh, Q and A will be uh, Darren Koo, the lead solution architect, uh, that's very involved in the EIC product. And also Pravin that we that you have uh, that show you the demo just now, uh, he's also uh, here to answer your uh, product specific questions, and uh, I will also be as part of the panel. Uh. Okay, so uh, let's go into the Q and A.
Okay. Uh, do we need to migrate user account after integrating to WOGAD for a mode three system? How do we go about it? Okay, so that's a that's a good question now because uh, right now your mode three are not connected, right? Then what happens when you migrate to WOGAD? Then what why actually the changes that is going through like what you need to take note about? Okay, so the answer to this right is that um, when we go with uh, integrating with WOGAD, right? So what happened is that when we authenticate with WOGAD, they will return us a claim. And this claim will, will, will say who that person is. So sometimes it can, uh, uh, depending on what, uh, what parameters or list of parameters that you request for uh, the uh, WOGAD to return you uh, for the claims. Like for example, one, one of the claims might be the email address or the username uh, uh, and, and so on and so forth. So, when you receive, when you integrate to WOGAD, you receive the claim and uh, you have these parameters. So for example, email address, and then you have to go back to your uh, local account that's stored in your system. And if your account has a parameter or, or list of parameter like emails, name, first name, last name, and if both matches, then you can actually consider this as, a, as an authenticated account. Uh. So um, there's, there's no, there's no, for say migration needed. Lah. So you just need to link up, basically you just need to link up uh, the parameters of few of the WOG, uh, WOGAD claims with whatever information or parameters list that you have in your worker accounts. Uh, does that answer your, your, your question? Okay, uh, uh, so don't worry, if you have any, uh, any questions, uh, uh, you can just, Post them in the Q and A, uh, and we will we will try to take the questions. Okay, so let's move on to the next question. Uh, okay, so uh, just now there's a question about regarding SSO. Uh, does does EIC Gov AD support SSO? So uh, actually, just now when Pravin went through the demo, right, uh, he actually mentioned about SSO. Lah. So uh, as you all know, like SSO has been very common really, and uh, uh, that many, many times it has been requested for SSO to be uh, supported lah, in the product. So um, yes, the answer is yes. EIC Gov AD supports SSO as what uh, Pravin has already uh, shown during the demo. And uh, uh, yes, if you, if you are considering SSO, yes, we support it. Uh, thank you for the question. Um, let, let me handle the, the next one. So there's a, a question on how is the patching and upgrades being notified, sent to and uh, implemented for the EIC. So for this one, um, um, actually our product team regularly releases our patches or bug fixes or security fixes and all this. So, um, and then just now, as I said, we actually provide product as a, ser as, uh, product as a service. So product as a service in this, in this case means that um, we not just sell you a product, but we also provide the services to deliver the, the product to help you install, to help you uh, set up and all this, and including maintenance. So that means that um, our, we will have a service manager attached to you and then we will have once the, the, there's a new release on the product, there's a new patch or a new new version, we will actually inform your, your project uh, managers and all that. So then we can also provide the services to help you to actually deploy and, and, and patch your product. So all these are uh, part of the, the service offering that, that we provide. So we don't just, uh, I mean, just, uh, just to summarize, we don't just sell your product, but we also actually help you um, deliver the product. Yeah. I will take the next question as well. So um, let me read the question. So for future SingPass and CodePass changes, although now today we are talking about GAF AD for WOGAD integration, but um, this question is regarding SingPass and CodePass, which is still relevant now. So for future SingPass and CodePass changes, will EIC support and include by default as part of the standard upgrades, or there will be change requests raised for a separate cost? So I think uh, it depends on what is the change. Uh. So for example, um, uh, for SingPass and CodePass as we transit from Samuel to, to OIDC, 
YDC uh, the, the, is, is a very different uh, specification from the previous um, Samuel uh, SingPass. So we actually release as a, as a new product. Um, but for incremental changes, like for example, NDI, uh, SingPass OIDC initially released a, a set of specs. And uh, later on, um, NDI OIDC also released another, another uh, uh, new, new specs. So um, as the changes are actually related and more incremental, we actually didn't, uh, um, we, we did it as an enhancement for the customer. So basically, and the OIDC requires you to do things like JWKS integration and all that. So we actually release as an enhancement. So it depends, very much depends on the nature of the changes. But key thing is most, most importantly is that, uh, as just how Wimping has uh, uh, described to you, our commitment to the government. So being 20 over years in the government business, uh, we are very committed. And uh, the key thing is that when there's a new specs or new standards released, we will not say um, say that we, we will not support it anymore, that, that kind of thing. So, so we will continue to support the government. So that, that is our commitment to you, and, and that's most important. Okay, let me take just one more before I, I pass on to, to the rest of the panelists. So um, does this implementation comply to the CAM requirement? So um, this question, actually, uh, the way I would like to answer is that, firstly, our EIC um, GAF AD is not meant to address the CAM uh, integration. So the CAM integration is something that uh, uh, we noted and highlight, highlighted to you that uh, next year, uh, GAF Tech is, uh, will require agency to start integrating the CAM. So CAM means that you allow the central um, CAM system to actually manage the uh, user accounts in your, in your system. So basically, what it takes to integrate the CAM in, uh, is that your application actually need to publish or provide some APIs for CAM to actually centrally manage your user accounts or the groups in, in, in the systems. So this has still has to be handled by the application. So, but um, what we are addressing here is that before you can integrate to CAM to manage centrally manage your user account, you must first integrate the WOG AD. So this is where EIC GAPD comes to play to allow you to quickly uh, migrate uh, your system to be leveraging on the WOG AD user account. So that, that is where, where we, the, the role that we play. Lah. So CAM, your CAM integration still has to be handled by your, your application. Do I need an existing new VM in the intranet IT zone for WOG AD? So it, it, it depends on the uh, on, on what you currently have. So if you're already on board with us and you already have an EIC product uh, that's installed in your IT tier, then uh, we don't need to add on a new VM because our product is already in there. So it's a matter of uh, subscription and uh, uh, configuration that we need to do on the, on the EIC side. Okay. So uh, thank you for all your participation. Thank you. Thank you, Wampin. Thank you, Pravin and Darren. And thank you so much for all the questions. But so sorry, due to time constraint, we are unable to answer all of them. But rest assured, we will get back to you as soon as possible. We hope we have actually provided you with lots of insights on how we can help your agency on this integration to GAF AD. Before you leave, you may want to click on the links in the chat box as uh, we have reposted them or you may scan the QR codes on the screen right now. Do subscribe to our social media channels and also to our Telegram channel for the latest updates. We hope you have enjoyed the webinar and we hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.